coach a lot of athletes in both uh, that compete in the U.S. championships and British championships. Can you, what differences? Any differences? Any any similarities? What do you? What's your? The championships are always um, where you earn your class. I mean, everything has to. You got you got two aspects. You're either going to run for time or you're going to try and win things. And I think I've always come from that position that you you're trying to run championships. Having said that, the standards now are such that you've got to run a, a reasonably efficient time to actually qualify. So there's a there's a bit of a double-edged sword there. Predominantly, the difference between America and British is standard and depth. The depth in America now is phenomenally strong from 800 through. And all of these guys from 8 to 10, you know, every race is going to be very. Uh, so it's going to be great to watch if you're not involved. <laughs> um, it's not going to be the greatest to, to sit there and see your charges run around the track and not really knowing how they're feeling at any given time. But. Uh, you know, we try and prepare them, and, and I think it was spoken about you know, Charles coming front runner and being a front runner, and also coming from back. You know, it's my responsibility when they're with me, and the longer obviously that I'm with them, we're trying to help them to develop their own trade so that they become multifaceted, so they're able to run from the front, from the middle, and from the, the back. Obviously, genetic qualities and physiological capabilities come into play. But um, championships are championships. We we know that. Uh, it's re very rarely does everybody come into the championship at 100%, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you you're not you don't necessarily need to buy from not being in that top that, that those top places. So you know these guys are probably known within the group at the moment that are running quite well, but we have others that have struggled along the way with allergies, which has probably been the worst year that we've we've had since I've been here, and other things. But you know they, they stand on the line. Um, everything before. Behind is, is probably the, you know is irrelevant. They stand on the line, giving themselves the best opportunity to make the team and, and hopefully be competitive to win the race as well. So that's all we can do. The, the final percentages are down to these guys, and mental strength will come into play. How, coach, how important are race racing tactics Massive to you, and uh, how much time do you spend spend well, on that? Well, we get stay at the line for about another hundred yards behind and give them a head start, and then try and sprint. So we've got a lot of energy at the end, but you probably come tenth in the race. So you've got, you know, I'm sorry to be facetious, but it's just, it's important, it's clearly important, you know, but if, I think Ben, ben alluded, everybody now with the depth and the standard being so good, these guys aren't stupid, they, everybody wants to be in the same place at the right time, and it's who can force that at that key moment, you know, we are being a little bit evasive with tactics, and clearly we're not going to start telling everybody our strategies, etc. We'll, we'll hopefully come in with a, a variety of different game plans. Number one is, and these guys will know, I, I don't, I'm not interested in the semi-final, I'm not interested in the final. I want them, they, they, they need to focus 100% on the heat, qualify first, then we'll deal with, deal with the next round. And so we'll, we'll put that support staff behind and make sure they recover efficiently and so they can be 100% hopefully when, when the final is to occur. Mark, can you talk a little bit about the process? Take Charles as a traditional front runner to maybe be able to run different ways. Well, that's been nothing to do with it, to be honest. As a, a coach athletes rather than specialists, Charles clearly was, you know, come to, to me as a, as a, as a you know, front runner. But to be honest, that, that's not been the, the biggest issue. It's like we, now Charles is in his second year, so it's very much okay. How, what did we learn in that first 12 months? Himself and his previous coach have obviously known more about him. I'm able then to assess some of the things we, we, we sit down at the end of the season, look at what went well, what didn't, try to pinpoint on aspects of preparation that need to be developed. Um, we go in with a template and just deviate one particular way. Hopefully we've picked up a few of those things from last season, the things that we've learned, whether it be nutrition recovery and increased miles, etc., etc., and just become, hopefully become a little bit more of an all-rounded athlete. Now, you know, we'll see now that he's hopefully a better athlete. Hopefully that will translate into the, into the, the championship. But um, I don't think there's been anything uh, this in this particular 12-month cycle to say I need to make changes to his strategy. It's to make him a better athlete. And when he arrived here, what, what, did, what was the, your mindset or Exciting was the first, and also trepidation. 
<laughs> there's a, a bit of an enigma being a 4 8 as a, as a coach. I like to challenge myself into different departments. Clearly, like I said, you know, I'm very much, you've got to make those transitions. I have a mindset on where I might want to go with it. Um, never dealt with anybody of Charles's characteristics. And so it would be folly for me not to listen to Hicks Rollins as a astute young man, knows what he wants and knows what he thinks he's capable of doing. And also the coaches that have gone before. You know, clearly they've got a, a, a depth of information that can bring to the table and I, and I speak closely still with some of those guys. Um, it's my responsibility, and especially when you've got this four year gap of between 18 and 22 or whatever it is at college, is that it's a little hit and miss on what's been done at that particular time. You know, I'd love to coach people just around that particular period so you can be with them longer. Um, so, you know, just pick up the pieces and run with it and hopefully we can make him a better athlete. What did you learn about? What did you learn from last year? Last year, um, recovery strategy probably and um, was, was the fundamental. Uh, what did I learn? I mean, oh, how much time have you got? We can look <laughs> at all the aspects. We can talk, talk about the coaching of the, the physiological aspects of the event, the specificity of that, the reco- like I said, the recovery and the support stuff. We found out a lot more information about some of the previous injuries had that had an impact on its ability to maneuver and biomechanics. Without getting too fluffy about biomechanics, but just movement skills. And just um, try and stick the pieces. Balance, possibly. We, we probably didn't get the balance right last year. No. No. Um, probably jumped and, and didn't integrate the changes. I think from a 4-8, I, 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 I think there's a, a little bit more of an emphasis on um, a one periodized framework rather than, as most of these guys know, I like double period for the indoor cross country or whatever, and then use that as a platform for them building for the, for the summer. I think that's a little bit more difficult to do with, um, with another 4-8 guy. So we need to be a little bit more methodical so, but I think he's the boss, I'm just adding value. So he might be able to answer that one a little bit differently to what I probably want. What's it been like having Mo Amon in the group this year? I guess it's for both Charles and Coach Roland. I mean, do you see a big distance between him and you, or is it encouraging because you're doing the same workouts with him? I mean, um, he's, uh, I mean aside from you know, workouts and stuff, he's just a great kid. Guys, up with us. He's really funny. You know, he's, a, he's a great addition to the group. You know, he fits in really well, you know, personality-wise and everything. Uh, when it comes to workouts, you know, he has experience. You know, he has the experience of winning uh, a world championship. He has experience of running you know, 142 low, you know, competing at the big league. So, uh, you know, just seeing that and you know, the way he moves when he works out and you know, the things he does has uh, you know, brought the energy. Charles, how beneficial was it to have a guy that you want to be there every day? You kind of gave yourself like this. It just makes it more real. You know, you, when you have dreams, you know, sometimes they seem kind of vague, you're kind of out there, but, you know, when, you, when you're with somebody that's done it, you know, it just makes it you know, that much more real that it's definitely possible. How has he been as a coach, as an addition to the group? Yeah, I'll just add on to Charles, because I think there's a couple of points to that. I think it's totally physiologically different. It's a, a couple of different angles. But I think um, having a world-class athlete is vital when you're trying to get people to convert onto the world stage. I think it's no illusion. We had Nick Simmons and, and Nick gravitated to a world championship and then went to the two companies and, and left. So we had a little bit of a void there. And so Nick would have been great to help to mold the younger breeds and then enable them to make those, those stepping stones. So we had a little bit of a gap. We had Sally, and I think that probably worked for the female aspect, um, part of the, uh, the group, the squad, and possibly Hassan with the event group that she was in. Um, but we had this middle distance that there was t- so many of them, and in the end, the guys have still, you know, uh, got to convert with some people on the board. Um, but Nick had done that, been there, done it, gone through the, the same pathway that with myself, got the medal, and then, then moved on, and so we had a bit of a gap. So having the ability, or sorry, ability, but having the opportunity to have someone like Mo come in who had been wanting to come, um, we took the chance.
chance to help to develop the, the American athletes. And it's not so much the training, like I said, it's the, the lifestyle that some of these guys breed, and it's, it's the, around the edges, which is fundamentally it's more important. And I, I use not so much the two hours that we see them, but the, 20, the, the, the 22 that we don't. And so that has to be improved, and they need to look after themselves better and become more professional. I think that nothing's been, been spoken about today. I think you know we're, we're all sitting back, st st sitting back and, and waiting for see what happens next. Down for the authorities to investigate our boat or to do defend himself. And uh, the appropriate actions will be taken with other people. We we just get on a different team. We get on and do our own thing. And we're focused on what we need to do, and we're here to compete, do the best of our ability to try and and try and get into the team for the, for the World Championships. What day do you guys compete? I believe Charles and I are on Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Thursday Friday, Sunday. Yeah, I'm on Thursday evening at 8.15. Yeah. 10,000. Yeah, busy day Thursday. I think most of the guys run from 8.15 and the 10K on Thursday, so we've got a pretty hectic time. <coughs> and uh, it's pretty warm. <laughs> Mark, thanks for uh, coaching these guys and uh, helping to increase the depth of the United States team. You talked about it being a, a special time because of so much depth, but you've actually added to the depth, so thanks. Very much. All right. Thank you guys for coming.